Hello and welcome. In the previous video we set up a main menu and in this video I am going to start the matchmaking for our game. So to do that we can go to the menu manager script and here we already created the buttons to start the matchmaking and stop the matchmaking and we have set the listeners for these buttons inside client awake function to start matchmaking and stop matchmaking functions. So when I click start matchmaking, first I'm gonna disable the start matchmaking button to avoid the user keep clicking on that button without waiting for the response for the first click. After that, we can simply call the real-time networking and start matchmaking. So this function is gonna take a few parameters. The first one is a game ID, the second one is a map ID, and the third one, we're gonna pass netcode as the extension to use. The game ID and map ID is basically any value that you wanna pass. It doesn't matter, it's just for you to identify which scene to open and which type of game mechanics you wanna implement. For example, in the main menu, you could give your players an option to select between two different maps and choose one for the first map and two for the second map or any other number. So these two values, you can pass whatever you want. For now, I'm just gonna pass zero for both of them. And because we are using netcode, I'm gonna pass the netcode as the extension. And for the stop matchmaking, we're gonna do the same thing by calling stop matchmaking and that doesn't take any parameters. So we can add a listener for these two events. Let's go and do it inside our client awake function so we say real-time networking on start matchmaking plus equal and I'm gonna implement on start matchmaking and I'm gonna do the same thing for on stop matchmaking so here we go let me remove that one and that one so on a start matchmaking we're gonna check to see if the response was a success and at the end regardless of the response we are going to enable the start button and if it was successful then I'm gonna set the text to searching and I'm gonna disable the start button and enable the stop button. I am going to do something similar on stop matchmaking. First check for the response, set the text to nothing if it was successful and then enable the start game object and disable the stop game object. And at the end, regardless of the response, we are going to set the interactable of the stop button to true because we set it to false when we call a stop matchmaking. And let's also go and remove the listeners inside the on destroy. So here it is for a start and stop. So now because we are using the netcode extension, we need to start listening for on netcode server ready. So we can do it similar to the other events inside the client awake function. So here we can listen on netcode server ready. So on netcode started event, the server has been executed, but it's not ready yet. So we need to listen for the server ready, which means that the server is ready and we can actually connect to the netcode server. So let's add the listener by equal plus, and I am going to name this on netcode server ready. And this event is gonna pass a port and a game data. Using these two values, we can connect to our server. Let's create a Boolean inside our client region. I'm gonna name it starting match. So now inside on a netcode server ready, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set the starting match to true. And then I'm gonna disconnect from the real time networking because we don't need it anymore. We used it for the matchmaking and now we're done with it. We don't want extra traffic and it is time to actually connect to the netcode server. And we don't need to do the connection logic here inside this function. We actually do it in the session manager. If you remember in the previous videos, we have implemented everything. So here in the session manager, I'm actually going to create a private static U short, call it port and also create a public static getter for it. So inside the menu manager, I can simply assign the port after I am disconnected from real-time networking. And here we can start the scene that we want based on the game data. If our game data dot map ID 
By the way, this map ID is the same map ID that we passed here in the start matchmaking. So any number that we passed here as the game ID, which is here zero is the number, we are going to receive here in the on netcode server ready. So for example, if the map ID is zero, and in our case, we know it is zero because that's what we passed, we are going to load scene index one. So inside our build settings, our playground is actually scene one, and we're gonna play that. But if you have more scenes, which means you have more maps, then you can use that map ID to play different maps based on what the user actually selected. So when that scene gets loaded, because there is a session manager on that scene, then here in the session manager, inside the start function, we can actually make the connection because we now have the port that we want to connect to because we set it in the menu. So to do that, let's first use the real-time networking.client. Now back to the start function. I am going to get a reference for the Unity transport. We can get that by using Network Manager Singleton, Git Component Unity Transport. And transport connection data dot address is going to be client which exists within the real time networking namespace dot instance dot settings dot IP. So this is the IP address we use to connect to the real time networking, which we set here in the settings that IP so we can access that IP like this and based on our role we can either start client or server so if it is not the server which means it is client we are going to set the transport connection data port to the port that we have up there and then I'm gonna simply call start client the function we already created and we used to call that inside the canvas manager by clicking a button but now we're just gonna call it here if we are the server we actually need to generate a port so inside the real-time networking client tools class there is a function called find free TCP port so I'm gonna call that and it's gonna return a random port for me that is available and I'm gonna put that port inside the variable that I've created here so if you are the client the port has already been passed to you but if you are the server you're actually gonna create the port yourself and after that you can assign the port to the transport connection data dot port and then start the server which is the function we use to call from the canvas manager now we're just gonna call it from here so there is an extra step that we need to do on the start server so after our server is started we need to inform the clients that they can now connect to the server so I'm gonna do this after I call network manager singleton start server but I'm gonna give it a few seconds before I do that so let's create a I enumerator name it inform clients and at the end of the start server function I'm gonna call inform clients so inside this I am going to wait for about two seconds and after that I'm gonna call real-time networking netcode server is ready and I'm gonna pass the port. So this is basically going to inform all the clients that they can connect now. So there is one important step that we need to do here and we need to close the server after the game is actually finished. Because if we don't do that, the server is just gonna keep running in the background and just consume resources. So to do that, I am going to create a bunch of variables, let's say up there. And these variables are just for the server, I'm not gonna use them for the client. I'm gonna create a float, so destroy server after seconds if no client connected. So if I'm the server, I'm gonna wait this amount of time. And if no client connects, then I'm just gonna exit the server. And I'm gonna create another variable, call it destroy server after seconds without any client. We have a timer, connected clients number, and we have a boolean saying at least one client connected, and another boolean called closing server. So to close the server, I am going to create a function, name it close server. And if our role is server, and if the closing server is false, I'm gonna set that to true. And to do that, all I need to do is call real-time networking netcode close server. And that's gonna take care of everything. Now let's also create the update function. So we already have a on client connected here on the start server. 
Let's also add the on client disconnected using our netcode manager. I am going to name it on client disconnect. And inside this function, I am going to take one from the connected clients count. And inside the on client connected, I am going to add one to connected clients. Also, when this happens, we know at least one client is connected. So I'm going to set that to true. So in the update function, I am going to check to see if I'm server. If we are closing the server, just return. And then I am going to check to see if at least one client is connected. If it is, then I'm going to check the connected clients. They should be more than zero. If they are, then set the timer to zero. But if no client is connected, and we know that at least one client used to be connected. Now we're going to start adding to the timer. And if our timer is greater or equal than destroy server after seconds without any clients, I'm going to close the server. And here, if no clients ever has been connected to the server, I am going to keep taking from the destroy server after seconds if no clients is connected. And if the time reaches zero, I'm going to close the server. So we're pretty much done here. Let's go to the menu manager. We have a server awake. So inside this, we are going to check for the game data. So when you are the server and when you start, so if your netcode server was actually started by real time server, then this data should not be null. So I'm going to check to see if it is not null. And if it is not null, then we can check the map inside the game data and using that start the scene that we want right now the map is zero because we passed zero and we can just open scene with the index one so let's go and take a look at the on netcode server is ready so when our netcode server is ready we are going to disconnect from real-time networking but we have set a event to listen on the real-time disconnect event and if that happens we're gonna reconnect but we don't want that so we're gonna check to see if start matchmaking is true then we are not gonna do the reconnect if we got disconnected so here on the real-time networking disconnected from server which is on disconnect function let's go ahead and find that here I'm not gonna do the reconnect if starting match is true I'm only doing it if it is false and the same thing here on connecting to server result here instead of calling reconnect first I'm gonna check to make sure starting match is false then I'm gonna reconnect also let's go ahead and see if we have removed the listener for on netcode server is ready let's do that in the on destroy so that's it so I think we're done on the unity side so let's go to the editor and here I'm actually having an error. Let's go and check it out. Inside the on character server RPC, we are getting the network object because there's already a network object inside the real time as well. It's gonna give us an error. So I'm gonna say unity dot netcode dot network object and that should take care of the problem. So this is over. Let's actually go to the build settings in the player settings. I'm going to change the screen size, let's say to 800 and 600 for now. And it doesn't hurt to run this in the background. Now, in order to run our client, I am going to create a build. Let's actually create a folder, name it build one. So let's go and build our project inside build one. And I'm going to switch to the dedicated server to build for the server as well. And for the server, we already have a server manager, which is the real-time networking package. So I'm going to create another folder and call it netcode server. So we have two server projects. One of them is the real-time server and the other one is netcode server. We never run the netcode server. We only run the real-time server and that's going to manage the netcode server for us. So eventually when you publish your game, you need to upload both these folders on your dedicated server to work together. And that's our first client. Let's actually go ahead and build the server as well. So I'm going to build for the dedicated server inside the netcode server. 
So now we have our builds. I'm not gonna even use Unity Editor. I'm just gonna use the, that is the client and that is the servers. So we need to introduce the netcode server to the real-time server. So let's open the real-time server. We already set the port and the database name in the previous video. Here inside the netcode extension, we need to give it the path to our netcode server. So let's go ahead and do that. Our netcode server is right here and that's it, TPS. So I'm gonna copy the path to my netcode server and let's go ahead and paste it right here. And for the name, it is going to be tps.exe in my case. And this is the maximum life of your server. So basically it is going to close your netcode server after this time is passed, whether the game is finished or not. That's just a safety check that you could use. So back to the terminal script. Here, actually, there is a function called override matchmaking data. So when a matchmaking is about to happen, here you can set how many players should be matched together. So you could do it using the game ID or map ID. You can do it however you want. Let me just clear that. For now, I'm just gonna say we need two teams and each team has one player. That's it. I'm going to start the real-time networking. Here we go. Let's go ahead and start the client as well. You never start the netcode server. That's just, you don't touch. It's gonna be handled by the real-time server. So now let's go ahead and start the client that we have right here. So I'm gonna play the project. And as you can see, it is going to be connected to the server and a username is gonna be generated for it. But we shouldn't open that again as a second client. So for a second client, I'm gonna take a copy of that paste it here. Now inside this folder, let's actually open this because we already played the game. So some data has been copied. I'm going to open the data network and here is the account data I'm going to delete. So now I can open this and it should be working as a second client. Here it is, a username has been generated, player three, and both of them are connected to the real-time server. Player two, let's actually start the matchmaking. It's gonna be searching for a match. Now, nothing happens because here in the real-time, we determined that we want two teams inside each match, and each team has one player, which means we need two players for a match. So right now it is searching. I can stop the matchmaking, start it again. So let's go to the second client. When I start matchmaking for the second client, it should match them both together. So let's do that. Now netcode server started, as you can see here in the console. Now both of them got disconnected and connected together in the same game. So now, as you can see, we have two players in the same match. And now if I close this one and close this one as well, both of those clients are now gone, but the server is still running in the background, the netcode server, and it is going to be destroyed because we actually wrote a logic for it inside the session manager. And we said, destroy the server if it is without any clients after 1200 seconds, which I think we should have chosen a smaller number because that's a lot actually. So change this to 120. So as I mentioned before, this package is still experimental. So if you could use Unity services, definitely use those. So thanks for watching.